Uh, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Helen He from NERSC. Um, and Suzanne Parrot Kuhn from Oak Ridge and I are going to present this introduction slide. We're very happy today for the um, Rice University HPC developer team to provide this training for us. HPC toolkit is the portable suite of performance tools for measurement and analysis of both CPU and GPU accelerated applications applies to various architecture of the CPUs and GPUs. So John um, Malakrami <coughs> um, bring, he's brought his big team today and himself and Laxono and Curran are speakers and a big team for um, helping us with training hands-ons um, later. So I'd like to first briefly introduce John Malakrami. He is a professor of computer science and electrical and computer engineering at Rice University. His research focuses on software technology for, for high performance parallel computing. His current research includes tools for measurement and analysis of application performance, tools for dynamic data race detection and techniques for network performance analysis and optimization. He leads the research and development of is the HPC toolkit performance tools, principally supported by DOE's Exascale Computing Project, or you've heard of ECP. He has also worked on data parallel compilers, runtime systems for scalable parallel computing, and others. John was named an ACM Fellow for contributions to parallel and high performance computing in 2013. So thank you again um, for the HPC developers team um, brought by John uh, Malakrami. So now a few uh, logistics today. So everybody is muted. We have um, 160 participants right now. You can unmute to speak or ask questions later. And we would like you to help us to change your name in Zoom session to your first name and last name so we know who you are. You can uh, click on participants and then the more button next to your name to rename yourself. There's a CC button to, I think I've, um, I've uh, enabled the live, live uh, subtitles and view transcript. So this is not uh, available for if you're using the web client, uh, mostly if you have a native client installed with the newest version, then you would be able to see subtitles and uh, view transcript. Am I still there? Let me just, oh, sorry. Yeah, I need to make it for script. Um, true. Okay, go on. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, now um, we, we can enable and disable um, titles of your, uh, to yourself. You can also even save a transcript um, at the end. And I would like you to join Slack for question and answers uh, instead of using Zoom chat, because it's more, uh, it can be threaded without uh, overloading and it's also available at off time. There are uh, two different channels, query help and summit help for uh, specific system questions. And the presentations are already uploaded to the, the channel presentations. Uh, we'll be using examples provided uh, in the GitHub repo. Um, you can download um, to your, uh, to the system and there are specific um, readme files in each uh, of the examples. The videos will be available afterwards. Here is a brief agenda for today. Uh, will be a lecture, uh, introduction to HPC toolkit by John Melacrami. And then there'll be three um, presentations with live demos, with GUI interface and GPU applications and CPU applications. Then we'll do um, hands-on work with examples and or your own applications. We'll be um, having two 10 minute breaks today and the whole session is three hours. And day two will be on Friday. We'll again walk through some of the examples and have more time to continue working on these examples or again, the big team uh, of, <clears throat> they're all available to even work one-on-one -on -one with you on your application codes. And I'm gonna show you a few of the query usage information. So we have added everybody, if you're already a NERSC user to the M3502 project, then, um, 
the um, if you don't have an um, account yet, I've added you to oh, come on to the uh, N Train account. You have a account uh, training account available through April 11th with GPU access, and we have made um, several reservations to today and to on Friday for GPU and KNR um, respectively. You will need to use these uh, reservation name and account name to set up some environment variables to use the examples uh, in the GitHub in the previous page. And you should log in to Corey with SH capital Y for X forwarding. And also, we prefer to use NX over X forwarding, over uh, dash Y if you, you can. It'll make your um, experience for using GUI very um, pleasant, almost no delay at all. There's uh, documentations here. Uh, if you have uh, done this uh, installation before, it'll be great. Otherwise, you, you can do it today. So one more slide about using HPC toolkit on Cori. The So for CPU, you would build on login node and run on compute nodes. For GPU access, all the software you have to build directly on the compute nodes and run on the compute nodes as well. There's a web page of HPC toolkit exam, um, some instructions just, and briefly for, for CPU, GPU, you would load HPC toolkit module. And for GPU, you have to uh, load C, C GPU module first to expose the uh, HPC, the, all the modules available on GPU. Then you would build with dash G along with um, optimization flags um, would be like all fast on CPU. And for GPU, if you use NVIDIA compiler, we are recommended to use dash G OPT so that um, you retain all your other um, optimization um, flags like F fast. And, and then the GPU line info is needed to um, get the, the um, detailed information on GPU. The next step is you run um, with HPC RAM and uh, uh, on Cori, both CPU and GPU would actually use SRAM. So you would be SRAM, some SRAM flags, and then, and then HPC RAM, my application, would measure the executable. Afterwards, you would do an HPC struct step to compute program structure for executable. And then on GPU, you need another HPC struct um, step with the dash dash GPU config with yes or no to get more um, information specifically for GPU machine code. Then you would use HPC prof to combine the executable measurements with the compute with the program structure information obtained from H HPC struct. You would have a database created and to be used by HPC viewer with GUI to use performance and after loading the HPC view module, of course. Um, this slide just give you a, a, some specific, spe um, specific example of using the HPC, HPC SDK compiler on Cori GPU. This is, is not specific about using HPC toolkit. Basically, I just want to let you know when using the Cori GPU, you want to do module purge and module load CGPU first on the login node. Then you would do an, um, prepare a, a script. Um, you would do as batch the script, and inside the script, you would have these. Um, general flags that we have on the document. But for this training specifically, you would add dash Q shared and dash dash reservation name and dash A account. And uh, if you already have a NERSC account without GPU access, oh, or even with GPU access, um, if you want to use the reservation, you have to use AM3502 or train to access it. And the reservation changes GPU nodes to be exclusive instead of shared. So we have to add dash Q shared. Without it, uh, if you're using reservation, you're gonna take the whole node, which is not good at all. We only have eight nodes reserved today for all of us, but we have um, eight GPUs per node. So using um, the dash Q shared, allow everybody to share the nodes. And actually today we're also recommending people use S batch instead of um, S alloc to get an interactive um, session that you would um, hold on the node for too long. So S batch allow people to share uh, more flexible flexibility. <clears throat> then to use the HPC SDK module, load this module in CUDA version, and then the, all these uh, sample com um, <clears throat> compile options with CUDA, OpenMP, OpenACC, etc. 
and fees op and PI OpenMP, allow multi load OpenMPI as well. And to run on, um, on GPU, always use SRAM, even if it's just a non MPI code. Uh, on this in, on the uh, CPU side, this is an example of using Intel compiler. So don't do module purge, don't do uh, load CGPU. If you are doing exercise with CP, with, on the GPU side and on the CPU side, we recommend you to use two separate terminals to avoid um, the confusion of the, mod the, <clears throat> the module um, environment settings. Because on the CPU side, you already did merge uh, module purge, you would lose all the settings needed for the CPU side. So open a new terminal to do CPU. Don't do all these purge and don't load CGPU. And to optimize for uh, KNL, do the first step module swap uh, KPE Haswell to KPE Mike KNL. And these are these, uh, examples of using comp um, the compiler wrappers to build your application. There's also a um, batch script um, to put in the reservation and account name. So I think this is all I have for the Corey side. And Suzanne, um, can you go on with the summit side, please? Yes, I'll, I'll share for the summit side. Oh, or you can drive and I can talk. Oh yeah, just let me know when you need that. Okay, so for summit, uh, first of all, we've set up a reservation. Um, I think for today it's 36 nodes, on Friday it will be 50 nodes. And you would access those by putting this vsub in your submission script. So this will go in your batch script vsub minus u. So for today it's HPC toolkit one. And then when we come back on the second, you will have to change this out a little bit. It'll be uh, HPC Toolkit 2. Uh, so this just reservation allows you to run. Uh, you'll just have to wait longer in the queue if you use without the reservation. So you should probably take advantage of that. Uh, I know that this training we offered only to current Summit users. So uh, if you are early and new in that process, the documentation is here at this guide. Um, and we'll be available on the Summit uh, Slack channel to answer any questions you might have if you're stuck. Okay, next slide. Uh, okay, so the steps, uh, there's a little bit of special sauce for running on Summit. Um, uh, and some of it's kind of similar to what Helen just told you about Corey. One of the things when you're using HPC Toolkit, your um, you know, your, your HPC toolkit profile directories are not written to standard out. So you have to be sitting in GPFS in order for those to work. So one of the first things you wanna do when you, before you download the training, you know, you get clone the training repo is you wanna be sitting somewhere in your project directory in Scratch and GPFS or in your project file, it's up to you. But this, the, the examples won't work if you're sitting on NFS where you come when you log in. Uh, for us, it's also module load HPC toolkit and our default is the most current version right now. Uh, when you're building applications, you would do with G. Uh, if you're using PGI, oops, PGI compiler, that would be dash G opt. Um, okay, instead of G. Uh, all our examples run with JS run, uh, the Intel launcher, uh, which again, we can help you in more depth with that if you don't know how to use it, but the basic form is JS run, plus your very important uh, flags that tell how you want it laid out on the node. And then HPC run uh, for the for HPC toolkit and then your executable. Uh, the basic steps after you run an application is you would use HPC struct to connect your binary with the HPC toolkit database. If you're using GPUs, that would be HPC toolkit or HPC struct dash dash GPU CFG. Uh, when you get done with that step, you'd use HPC prof to combine your measurements with the program structure information. Now, one of the things we're going to ask, and this is very, very, very important, please do not try to view your profiles on Summit. We don't have NX or any sort of sharing setup. So if you're viewing your profiles, uh, just in the way some of the instructions are written uh, for the Cora users, um, you'll be running on the summit login nodes and it only takes a couple of you to take those down or probably more than a couple, but basically if everyone views their profiles on the login nodes, we'll take down the login nodes for all summit users. So I'm gonna go through the basic steps on what you need to do to view your profiles. Uh, so everything is outlined in these two links uh, and they have very good instructions. So there's two things you need to do to view your profiles in the GUI. 
The first is to download HPC Toolkit and get it installed on your laptop. And hopefully those of you that registered had time to do that with the instructions that we sent uh, in, in the emails. Uh, but this is, I'm gonna go through these steps just a little bit in a slide, but this, this site has everything you need and it's, it's very straightforward. The second step is that you need to be able to download that directory of profiles that HPC Toolkit generates. Uh, and the two methods that are probably easiest for users are SCP and Globus. So we have a page uh, that has detailed instructions for both of those. But let me go through each of these uh, steps in sort of an outlined way. So first, uh, your example workflow uh, for downloading HBC Toolkit is you go to the website. And the first thing they tell you to do on that website is to install Java 11 or make sure that your laptop is at least up updated for that. Uh, I did this. I have a you know, I, I used the opt open JDK, uh, followed the instructions there, and it took me about three minutes to install it on my, my Mac laptop. Uh, after that, you'll go down the instructions on that page and you'll find instructions for install, installing HPC Viewer uh, for your OS. So uh, in my case, uh, I used the instructions off that page for Mac OS, and these are the instructions that told me to create a, a directory, HPC Toolkit GUI, um, and then use curl to get the version and then unzip it and install it. And that worked flawlessly in about five minutes. Um, go to the next slide. So, and there are instructions for each one of your different uh, forms of laptops and operating systems on that page. Um, so one of the things that is interesting about these installs is your, your actual HPC viewer application ends up sort of down in a few directories in this HPC toolkit latest that you downloaded. So mine for the Mac ended up in a folder called HPC apps with a, inside a folder called contents inside a folder called Mac OS. And that's Aaron, where my Jamal executable Jamal. was. Uh, this is John Jamal Jamal. I have a, a comment about that. Yes. yes. So you, you don't actually have to run it from that path. You can just say like open hpcviewer.app on the map, or okay. you can double click on it if you look at it in the finder. So you don't actually have to know that long path that's down inside one of the Mac application bundles. Okay. Okay, so, well, right. So John is correct, you, you can do that. Um, so, but I also said, you know, um, Right, so you could do that and, and ignore these next two sets of instructions, but that was just two ways that you could launch this. Uh, the command line would obviously be to go out from there to find wherever you downloaded your um, profiles or inside the GUI, you can navigate pretty easily to whatever folders you need um, once it's launched to find your profiles. So John is right, you can do that, but once the GUI is launched, it's pretty easy to find whatever you need inside the structure of your computer. Okay, go on to the next slide. Uh, so to get your, your examples down onto your laptop, I know people love uh, SP, or, uh, SCP because I've written papers about the usage of that and uh, it, it always is the most popular transfer tool. So like I said, remember those, tool, those profiles that you generate are gonna be directories. So to use SCP, you're going to need to tar up those directories. So here's an example with one from Quicksilver GPU you know, it's your, it's your basic tar command uh, that you will do from Summit. Then on your laptop, um, you might wanna make a directory on your laptop to catch all of these profiles as you're downloading them. Uh, you would just use the retrieving command from your laptop to retrieve that file via the DTNs. Again, please do use the OLCF DTNs and not the Summit login nodes uh, to protect the usage from all of us hitting it once. And once you get it, then, then untar your file. And I know most of you would know that, but just don't forget. Next slide. So the other way to do this is with Globus. And this was something that you could have done ahead of time too. Uh, the benefit of Globus is it's a GUI and also you don't have to tar your directories to move them. Uh, so uh, the first thing that you wanna do is um, if you've never done this before is go to that documentation site that I listed. It's OLCF documentation and it's going to tell you three basic steps in order to get this done. So one of them, you're going to need to log into globus.org with your OLCF username and PIN plus passcode. There's lots of instructions on that. And in fact, when you get to that login page, it'll offer you the institutional login that'll say ORNL. Um, 
once you're done that, uh, if you look on that link, it gives you some instructions for installing a Globus Connect endpoint on your computer. This is very simple. Uh, this link inside those instructions gets you to three binaries that you would download either for a Mac, a Windows, or a Linux machine. Uh, download them and follow two or three simple instructions, and that gives you a, a Globus Connect personal endpoint on your laptop. The most important thing I think here is that you name the, the Globus Connect endpoint so you can remember what it is and distinguish it from other things that you might be using. So uh, mine generally are like my name or my initials dash laptop. So that's what I would name my endpoint so I could remember it. Then you're going to switch to the file manager window in Globus and you're going to activate the OLCF DTN endpoint. Uh, activation, if it's not activated, is your OLCF username and your PIN plus passcode. Once you type this in, to activate it. Um, and there's actually step-by-step -step instructions in this link on how to do that. But once you have that activated, um, you would uh, leave that in one side of the file manager. It's a two-paneled window. On the other side, you would go find your laptop uh, endpoint and it's already activated once you uh, set it up. And then you can drag and drop the profiles between the two windows. So that's a pretty rough outline. Like I said, there's very detailed instructions in this link about how do you do both SCP and Globus, uh, including installing your own personal endpoint. So I think that's it for my files.